It's Brian Preston, the money guy. All right, we got a question from Andrew to kick us off. What are y'all's thoughts on using a line of credit, like a HELOC, a credit card, margin, or a combination of these, as a type of emergency fund? <laughs> I feel like Brian may have some experience to share on this one. We'll see. Um, to, for some context, he says, I keep one month of expenses in a checking account and save about 33% of my net worth. Mm. Or net income, I guess, not net worth. Dude, Kudos but, to you on an you awesome net. saving. Oh, let me start. I, I, start. I figured you'd want to start before I just drop the hammer on Kudos, this thing. Kudos <laughs> to you. Uh, did did Andrew say how old he was? He did not. Okay. Kudos to you for an amazing savings rate at thirty plus percent. That's awesome. You are doing something that is amazing. But then you ask this question: Hey, I'm in a great spot. I got this great savings rate. But I'm a maximizer. I'm an optimizer. I'm a real financial mutant. Guys, what do you think about me using all this equity from all these great decisions I've been making to possibly have that as an emergency fund? So, Brian, with that, how would you answer Andrew? So here's the beauty of doing content creation since 2006. There's actually been some evolution in what I share and even the guidance based upon the knowledge I've obtained through experience. Mm -hmm. Now, fortunately, we get a lot of experience working with very successful families all over the country. We can tell you those talents and skills that you can implement to be successful. But every now and then, you have to trip and fall into a hole to realize you've, you've learned something. And for mine, if you go listen to my contents, probably from 2006 to 2010, Andrew, we're going to be brothers from different mothers in the fact that I was a financial mutant. I had bought a house in 2004 that had appreciated tremendously, and banks back then were giving you home equity lines with zero cost, minimal underwriting. Um, this is all the stuff that got us in trouble with the financial collapse of the Great Recession. But um, it seemed like a no-brainer. You know, I, I had you know six figures of a home equity. I was a financial mutant that won my dollars being maximized. So that it, by, by my thought of maximizing was investing that money in index funds and growing it, just like you're talking about, Andrew. The problem is this is where the education came in. 2008 to 2011, if you if you guys don't know, when things go ugly and they go sideways and the train comes off the track, it's not a one-and-done event, mm -hmm. meaning that it's not just the train comes off the track. It's also that people start losing their jobs, mm -hmm. real estate markets get crushed, the stock market goes down substantially. These all things, I've, I've shared it with you guys, market volatility, bad economies, bad real estate, they're all extroverts and they love being the life of the party, hanging out with other bad news events that could be happening. So that's what happened to me is that I had a house that on paper was worth over a half a million dollars. Um, and then I had run up, a, I had a home equity line attached to it that was over six figures of access. And then I get a letter in the mail from, I, I think it was Wachovia at the time, um, where they said, hey, uh, you know that home equity line you have with us? Um, we have this new fancy dancy computer system that goes out there and compares market values of real estate and our fancy dancy system says your house that you think is worth over half a million dollars is only worth two hundred and seventy thousand mm. dollars as a result of that your home equity line is frozen uh -huh. and we're no longer going to give you access to it um you know if you owe, owe any money that's fine but don't don't use that don't use that debit card we gave you don't use the checkbook we gave you you don't have access to any of that home equity line so you, you know, I feel like the music stopped. And So pause there for a second. Andrew, assume that you're in that situation, right? That same thing happens. You said you have one month of emergency expenses available to you. What if you lose your job? Like, what if you lose your job and then your home equity line dries up? You've got one month. You are faced with an incredibly difficult decision. What do you do? How do you pay your mortgage? Or do you have to sell your house? Do you have to find somewhere else to live in order to be able to get that equity? I would say you are flying a little bit naked. Well, what I did is I prayed. <laughs> because I was like, God, if you will get me through this situation, I will never, ever, ever, ever 
discount the value of having liquidity mm-hmm. in the bank to get me through dark times because, guys, it is scary. I mean, you will – if you realize – that you and what really stinks is because you're a financial meeting, you're probably loading up your retirement accounts. Thirty plus percent. So you have tons of money on paper that you're dumped into the financial markets. They're down now twenty plus percent because, that, like I said, these things run together, and yet you feel so helpless because you can't even cover. You know, if you lost your job two months, or at the time I had a, a growing small business, I'm worried about payroll. Sure. I'm worried about, you know, how am I going to pay my employees? I mean, it, it is just the worst thing in the world. I don't want you to ever face that type of situation. So respect. I know as financial mutants, we try to squeeze every ounce of opportunity and growth out of our dollars, but there's a lot of value out of having liquidity and cash. And I've honored that prayer. Mm-hmm. I have never since not had extra cash. And by the way, that extra cash can actually be a true wealth builder because think about this. I learned from Warren Buffett. Every time we have a financial, what seems like a bad situation, tragedy, um, black swan event, you know who everybody always looks to to bail them out? Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, um, I think Mars, the, the the pet food and candy store, I think I'm, it's always Warren. Mm-hmm. Warren seems to always be the one that everybody goes to and says, hey, can you write me a check? Because they know he has cash. And, you know, Warren, he kind of licks his chops because, by the way, Warren has cash, but his cash ain't cheap. He's going to want you to give him equity. He's going to want warrants. He's going to want uh, you know high high yield on top of that cash. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start keeping extra cash. Not only will it be the bridge if I face in a financial emergency, but it's going to be a wealth builder when everybody else is without cash because oxygen leaves the room. Everybody's suffocating because they didn't have any cash. And you're like, I got an oxygen tank, and I'm willing to share some of this oxygen, which is my cash. And that's how... How did we get this building? Mm-hmm. Pandemic kicks in, and everybody's thinking commercial real estate is done because we're all working from home. Nobody's going to want to be doing this. We're just going to Amazon and work from home for the rest of our lives. And Bo and I are sitting on cash. We need office space because we're mm-hmm. a growing company. We're like, let's take advantage of this situation, find the lemonade out of the lemons that we've been handed, and we were able to buy this building. Yep. And that's... That is a skill set that nobody talks about. Not only does it save your rear end from disaster, but it also will help you create wealth because you'll be the only person in the room that has cash and liquidity so you can go make once-in-a-lifetime purchases because you were deliberate with how you built your cash reserves.